Let it go. Let it go. <clears throat> Don't judge me. Hey guys, Shalani here. Welcome to the Ben Zone. On today's video, we're talking about Elsa from Frozen and Frozen 2 and just how her powers work. Because if you think about all the cool magical people who have great ice powers, Sub-Zero, Iceman, Frozone, Jack Frost, Hitsugaya from Bleach, all these people are powerful in their own right. But then you have this character from Disney and Pixar's Frozen and shit, Elsa's pretty powerful. But just how powerful is Elsa? How does her powers work? And where do her powers come from? Well, that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. We're gonna take a deep dive into her powers based on the information we've gathered from the first Frozen movie and Frozen 2 who just came out. So before we dive too deep into that, let's think about the nature of her powers and that is ice. There are different forms of manipulating and creating ice such as the way Iceman does it, which is the slowing down or the acceleration of molecules. So Iceman himself doesn't create ice, more so he manipulates matter and neutrons and electrons and all that and therefore creates the ice by slowing it down, causing the freezing. Hits a guy from Bleach uses something called Ratio Reetsu to manipulate the spirit particles to create ice. And then you have Sub-Zero who kind of learned this mystic form and that's more akin to the way Elsa's powers work because Elsa herself, I didn't get to Jack Frost because Jack Frost is Magical's Christmas land powers so like you can't really quantify that. But with Elsa, we see that Elsa's powers are magical in nature and not just the fact that she can create ice which in itself is pretty powerful because ice itself or freezing something is just stopping the rapid movement of molecules and atoms because if you think about the way life in general works like in the atmosphere air everything is moving atoms are consistently moving like all over your skin everywhere around you atoms are moving so when you start to slow that down right it stops the heat from generating therefore creating cold and that's what ice or creating cold really is but when it comes to elsa her powers are like i said magical in nature and in frozen 2 we got a deeper look at the origin of her powers and in Frozen 1, we saw her do some pretty crazy stuff, like a country-wide snowstorm. That range and power is just... Yo, like, Elsa is, like, legit over some of these characters. Like, I'm thinking of Sub-Zero. I'm thinking of Hitsugaya. These characters, Jack Frost, like, the limits and scopes of their powers aren't on the level that Elsa has displayed just by sheer width and area. But that's just that we see that her magical ice is also able to bring the ice to life and create life and or out of inanimate objects such as snow or snowmen, i.e. Olaf or her snow golem. She's able to create clothing from the ice, an ice castle, and various other things like in Frozen 2, she was able to create rope and different, just various things with her ice. So it's very malleable in the way that she uses it. So let's look at the origins of her powers. In Frozen 2, we find out that there are four major elemental magics in the world of Frozen. There's a fire spirit, there's a water spirit, there's an earth spirit, and there's a wind spirit. Those four are the four elements that live in harmony into the Fire Nation attack. Okay, I'm just fucking with you guys. But those are the four major elements of the Frozen universe and their power and they're the source of their natural elements like fire, water, and everything. And then we find out there's a fifth element and that fifth element is the bridge gap between the humans and the elementals and that fifth element is Elsa. Elsa herself is an elemental magical spirit and a bridge between the spirit world and the human world. So her powers off rip are elemental in nature because it's ice as one which is kind of confusing because in that universe, the universe of Frozen, there is a water spirit and if you look at ice objectively for the most part, they use it as frozen water, but in Elsa's case, it's not just water. The fact that she can bring life to snow and inanimate objects shows that there is some sort of life energy in her magic. So Elsa herself is the bridge gap between the spiritual realm and the human realm. Therefore, that's why she's able to give life to Olaf or her ice golem. And that's because being the bridge between the spiritual world and the physical world gives you some sort of primordial magic that brings life. That's why in the movie she was able to reenact memories and look through time and animate stuff that's happened before. Like, for example, in the movie we found out more about her mom's past and her father's past and she was able to do that and capture their time remnant memories with her eyes. So the amount of mysticism 
involved in that is very primordial and spiritual in nature. So Elsa's powers themselves are spiritual, magical, and she's able to, as we see, freeze herself, unfreeze herself, freeze other people, bring it to life. So there's a life force altering energy in that. And then you take the fact that Elsa is the bridge to the human world, that connection there brings it there. But then the scope of her powers is what's really fascinating because Elsa froze all of, what was they called again? Arendal. Because Elsa was able to put all of Arendal, which is an entire kingdom, under ice. And that scope is huge. And we don't see a, a definite limit to Elsa's powers because we see her do this and she's still able to continue, create a castle, create an ice golem, and do things like tame the other elementals. She seems to be the most powerful of the elementals. And that's because, again, when you think of ice and snow and freezing things, it's not just water like it should be water if you freeze water but in Elsa's case it's more akin to the scientific way of the way that cold and ice work and that's the slowing down of molecules I said earlier her powers are kind of like Sub-Zero but, but if you take Sub-Zero and you fuse them with Iceman it's more closer to what Elsa is and that's her slowing down the molecules of these things that's how she was able to put out fire with ice because fire technically melts ice but if you can slow down the molecules of the fire enough, you can snuff the fire out, which is what Elsa did in all her trials against other spirits. So her powers, in a sense, are mystical, but at the same time grounded in actual science. They're grounded in actual science because it's the slowing down of molecules. So while in the movie itself, it shows us that she is a spirit, an elemental creature, her powers themselves are both mystical in nature by bringing things to life, which is fascinating. But at the same time, it's just the basic scientific ice or cold, which is slowing down molecules. And therefore, it takes the form of ice in Elsa's case. But guys, that's pretty much how her powers work. Half magic, half science, all based on a character in Disney, which is pretty cool. And with that said, I believe Elsa's powers put her on par if not better than some of these characters. Like, if Sub-Zero were to try to fight Elsa, I think Elsa would kick Sub-Zero's ass. And that's because her powers are wider in scope. But guys, that's my thoughts. That's how Elsa's powers work. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. And until next time, binge on.